Ooh. All right, for the next video, what I want to show you guys is why are asymptotes approach, but they never really equal, all right? And some of you might have been familiar with, if I was going to take a dollar bill, right, and I cut it into half, I would have one half of a dollar bill or 50 cents, right? If I split that in half, I'd have one fourth, or we'll call it a quarter, right? And if you keep on splitting things in half, you keep on getting smaller and smaller and smaller amounts of money, right? Yeah. <laughs> but you're going to keep on splitting numbers smaller and smaller and smaller, right? Well, you're still never ever, there's always going to be something you can keep on splitting in half. You're never going to actually get to zero. You're going to get very, very, very close. But you think on, if you think about it, there's always something you can keep on cutting in half. So you're never actually going to get to zero. Does that make sense? Yeah. If you guys think of it, just keep on going down numbers. I mean, yeah. keep on going down. You're going to keep on getting a smaller and smaller number, less and less money, but you're never actually going to get to zero because there's always going to be something you're going to cut in half. Well, when you're looking at asymptotes, our function is they're doing the exact same thing. It's approaching a number, but it's never ever going to get to that number. So what I want to do is I just want to do some calculations to show you guys how that makes sense. So let's look at this function right up here. And let's say, so here's my x values, right? One, two, three, four, five. Let's look at f of one, two, three. Let's look at f of three. So my function, I'm going to go in this direction and let's see what happened, what the end behavior is. f of three is going to be four over three minus two cubed. Well, that equals four, right? Okay? So as I go over one, two, three, let's say one, two, three, four. Now let's do f of 30. Okay? So it's 4 over 30 minus 2 cubed. So I'm going to use my calculator for this one. So 28 cubed. So 4 divided by uh, 28 cubed gives me 0.123182 dot dot dot. So that's a pretty small number, right? Pretty small. But now let's try f of 300. So that's way over there, right? Way, way over there. If you guys can just imagine my whole room was a graph, 300 is way over there. So let's see if that is zero. So I'll do uh, 298 cubed. So 4 divided by that is going to give me 0.123456. Dot, dot, dot. So you guys can see, look, now I have six zeros. And so what do you guys think is we're going to keep on going. We're just going to keep on adding zeros. But we're always going to have something at this end. We're not actually going to ever get to zero. Does that make sense? You guys see how close, my new, we're see how close we're going to get? But you're never, ever going to actually touch your asymptote. All right? Over here, it's the exact same thing. Let's look at the point um, f of 1. See, this was approaching your horizontal asymptote. Let's see how it approaches your vertical asymptote. So if I do f of 1, so that means that's going to give me negative 1 cubed. So that's going to give me a, and I know this graph is imperfect, but so I do f of 1, that's going to be 4 over um, 1 minus 2 cubed. Well, that gives me negative 4, correct? Mm -hmm. So over 1 goes down 4. Yeah, or that probably should be something like that. All right. So now let's do, well, we can't do f of 2 because we know f of 2 never hits, right? So let's do f of 1.5. So that's 4 over 1.5 minus 2 cubed. So that's going to be a negative 0.5 raised to the third power. 4 divided by that is a negative 32. So that gives me a negative 32. Whew, pretty close. Um, then let's do, um, let's get something even closer. So let's split that. Let's just do 1.9. Let's see really close. How much would it be really close? So I do f of 1.9 
equals 4 divided by 1.9 minus 2 cubed. So 4, 1.9 is going to be 0.1 raised to the third power. 4 divided by that is going to be 4,000. So you guys can see 4,000 on this graph is going to be way, way down there. So as I get to, you guys see, and when I started at 1, I got to negative 4. When I do 1.5, it's down to 32, which would probably be like the bottom of the floor. Then I get to 1.9, it's going all the way down to 4,000. All right? So if you keep on doing like 1.99, 1.9999, you're just going to get bigger and bigger values down your y-axis. All right? But it's never, ever, ever going to approach 2. Does that do a better example of what vertical and horizontal asymptotes are? Kind of? Yeah. No? Yes. Yeah. So is that how you would um, graph it without a calculator? When you're graphing a calculator, what we're going to do is we're going to practice plotting points, and we're going to be picking points that we're going to want to use, and then we're going to plot and generate the curve from there. Okay? Anybody have any questions, though, about the generality of what asymptotes are? No? I mean, I didn't care at the whole beginning, but it's just taking notes. Huh? I didn't care the whole beginning of oh. the explanation. Okay. Okay. I'm going to